Hello everybody. Thank you for uh, for participating to this new clinical webinar about the G-Walk. This is Marco from BTS. Uh, during this webinar, we will talk about uh, the clinical experience of using the G-Walk. We will discuss uh, in particular about uh, why to assess uh, to gait and motion in uh, neurological clinical practice. This is a tricky question. So we invited uh, Christian Huber of uh, Praxis Lamprecht Clinic in Germany to share his daily clinical experience in physiotherapy and to answer to this uh, important question. So now I would like to introduce Christian and let uh, him have the stage. I just want to, to mention that at the end of the presentation, we, we are available for any question. So you may ask the, the questions, so just type in the question in the chat area. So I thank you again, Christian, for this opportunity that you are giving to us and for your availability. Yeah, okay. So uh, welcome everybody to the clinical webinar. And uh, today the topic will be how uh, Marco mentioned neurological patients and why to assess the gait and uh, the motion in clinical practice. So, um, first of all, I want to mention uh, my mentors um, because I'm a big fan um, of this when it's, uh, uh, it is due. And uh, they learned me a lot. So, um, let's talk about the uh, Lambrecht Clinic. It's a rehabilitation clinic located in Kirchheim in Germany. And they are operating in the rehabilitation field for over 30 years and uh, providing high quality therapy, counseling and also health care. It uh, counts on a unique knowledge in the field of neurology, uh, for example, Parkinson's disease, multiple sclerosis and for, of course, also the stroke, orthopedics and geriatrics. So, um, Hans and Sabine Lambrecht uh, founded the HSH Lambrecht Clinic in 1987 in Kirchheim. And uh, by the end of 2006, the practice evolved into an interdisciplinary therapy center with uh, 40 employers on 1,000 square meters. In 2009, Sabine and Hans Lambrecht opened a practice for physiotherapy and neuro rehabilitation with uh, medical training therapy at the uh, Eisbär House in Kirchheim. So, uh, to the history from 2009 to 2014, due to uh, the high demand, the workforce and the therapy areas were expanded. Uh, Sabine Lamprecht is uh, now well known across the country as a lecturer uh, for further education and uh, also in colleges where she plays an, an active role in teaching activities in, in Austria, Switzerland, and uh, also in the European countries. And they are also authors of uh, specialized books, for example, uh, training in neurology and hypotherapy. So, um, the services nowadays of the Lambrecht Clinic are uh, the whole spectrum general physiotherapy, so general practitioner, uh, but also occupational therapy, speech therapy, medical training therapy, and people therapy. The, cl the clinic is also equipped with uh, the most advanced technologies in the neuro rehabilitation field. For example, let's mention the FES functional electric stimulation uh, of Bionis, the Terra Trainer, Lyra Gate Rehabilitation System, Belo Balancing and Tygo Cycling. 
So uh, HP Cosmos Locomotor with an Airwalk, uh, Robowalk, and um, for example, MTD Balance. And last but not least, the MindMaze 3 dimensional um, virtual reality. So today we're going to talk about the Chiwalk. And what is Chiwalk? Uh, Chiwalk is a digital tool that uh, provides objective data in a quick and easy way necessary for an uh, objective assessment of the walk. So what you here can see is the Qi sensor. And the Qi walk allows you to measure the progress of the gait before uh, and after a given treatment or the intervention uh, of the exercises. And uh, of course, this is uh, fundamental in the clinical practice to evaluate the efficiency of the rehabilitation path. So um, now we have an evidence with the objective data. And uh, for me, in the clinical practice, uh, I think you all know, um, the compliance of the patient is the, the most important to uh, have a great outcome in therapy. And we have two points. Um, to get the patient in action, in uh, motion, with his emotion, because um, instead the suffer pressure, or it is the second um, which gets the patient into action, the enthusiasm. And uh, in my experience with the patients working with Chi Walk, we have a big motivation, inspiring and um, resulting in motivation with the Qi walk. They see the progress. Also, we can share the results with uh, our team. Yeah, So we can uh, discuss about uh, making an update of the therapy or change the direction in the uh, rehabilitation process. So um, provide uh, evidence is uh, very important. Um, for example, we had the case um, of a patient. Um, she obtained reimbursement from her private insurance. Uh, the example was the FES functional electric stimulation. Um, we showed uh, that much benefit for her in the gate with GWALK before and after. Or in other words, with Bioness and without Bioness. And uh, yeah. So we had the objective data. So how does GWALK work? Um, here you can see we have six opportunities um, of assessments. We have the walk test. Um, so we can um, have nice objective data about um, the gate phases, stands, swing phase, symmetry index, propulsion index, we mentioned uh, in a few minutes. Uh, second, we have the timed up and go test. It's um, very important, um, especially the geriatric patients. Um, we can interpret the performance in the daily um, life activities. We have uh, third, the six minutes walk test. And there also we can um, have an interpretation, a clinical report about the performance uh, of the physical performance and the resistance of the body, uh, of the patient's body. And uh, the fourth uh, test is the turn test. Uh, the turn test is important for um, especially neurological diseases, um, for example, Parkinson's disease and multiple sclerosis. Are the patients able to turn the direction during their gait or are they just um, able to move a straight direction? So uh, that's also in my clinical experience uh, an important test. And um, so the fifth test, it's the running test and the running test Mm, is more uh, considered for the sports athletes in sports physiotherapy. Uh, we also had um, 
an interpretation and objective data of uh, the performance of uh, the sport athlete's body during the process of rehabilitation. And uh, the last and sixth test of the G-Walk is the jumping test. Um, jumping test also for sport athletes in orthopedics, uh, for example, with ACL reconstruction on the knee would be a great test. So um, today we will focus on the walk test. Um, the clinical evaluation of the gait is uh, fundamental to demonstrate the functional benefit of a given treatment. Yeah. So we do the tree walk, uh, walking test uh, pre-therapy and post-therapy. And it also is uh, fundamental to quantify potential alterations induced by aging and or neurological, orthopedic or geriatric pathologies. For example, uh, geriatric patients. Yeah, We can measure the cadence, the frequencies of the steps per minute. And uh, with the G-Walk, we have the objective data and um, also the cadence, the decrease in the frequencies of the step per minute would be um, an interpretation that the risk for a fall is that much higher yeah, in ge uh, geriatric patients. And so we have the opportunity with the G-Walk to uh, point it, that out. So here we have a video of the acquisition procedure of the walk test. Here you can see the G sensor. Let's look again. Okay. So, how does GWOC work? We have the clinical report you can see here on this slide. Um, at the end of the acquisition procedure, the software of the BTS provides a complete clinical report. Um, now we focus on the work clinical report and uh, this test allows um, us the assessment of uh, the gait cycle phases. I mentioned the swing and the stance phase, uh, also the spatiotemporal parameters, for example, speed velocity, and um, the cadence, the frequencies of the steps per minute. Uh, very nice, we have the symmetry index and the propulsion index, also um, uh, objective data about the pelvic angles during the gait. Now, uh, let's talk about the clinical cases. Mm. We, he, we have here first a uh, female patient, she's uh, 59 years old and with the diagnosis of multiple sclerosis. So let's have a look on her gait. So we can see that the gait is impaired. That's uh, without the bioness functional electric stimulation. And that's the video you have seen. Now we have a look on the clinical report of the walk. So you see highlighted the color in red and green. Now let's focus on the right side, the symmetry index. The symmetry index in this clinical report uh, would allow us an interpretation of the ability of the patient to accelerate um, his center of mass forward, yeah, symmetrically. Yeah. Here we can see um, it's decreased because the color in red 
and she has a value of 74.3 percentage. So uh, she is um, more centered, more with his mass on the right side. Looking on the propulsion index, um, we see the left leg. Yeah, we have a value of 6.2 is highlighted in green, and a value of 2.8 on the right impaled leg. Yeah, so uh, the right leg we see, and the propulsion index is uh, decreased, colored also in red, and. Uh, the propulsion index allows us um, to have a more detailed look on the behavior of each limb, yeah, left and right, and also the balance between. So here we have a big difference, uh, a difference with, um, up to three would be very high. Here we have a difference uh, between left and right of 3.4. So uh, it's not quite balanced between left and right. We have a look on the quality index, left walk quality index, and also it's highlighted in red. We see uh, 78 percentage, and um, I have to mention it's a synthetic index. Um, the stance phase covers 60 percent from 100 percent. The swing phase 40% uh, of 100%. So we have the relation between stance phase and swing phase. And normal, I have uh, mentioned, she has a stance phase of 50 and also a swing phase of 50 percentage. So um, it's near the same time. Um, have a look deeper below uh, on the table on the spatio-temporal parameters. We can see the cadence. There we have a value of uh, 87 and the speed um, meters per second with uh, 0.95. So, and here is the walk with the Bionest functional electric stimulation on the right lower limb for the dorsal flexor. So, let's have a look. We have the opportunity with the video, and uh, I think the differences are um, obviously we can see it. So the clinical report with the bioness first we see is highlighted in green. So let's uh, point it out. The symmetry index, uh, an index over ninety percentage, would be considered as healthy. And she has a value of 93.9 percentage. So, great difference with the Bionis. Yeah, objective data, evidence, it's a fact. So, and uh, also very nice, the propulsion index. We see um, it's more balanced between left and right. The right leg is uh, more able to um, push um, the body forward. And uh, the acceleration is that much better. Uh, the difference between left and right would be now a value of um, 1.6. Yeah, so it has uh, decreased and more balance between left and right leg. So uh, and having a look on the quality index, um, the left step you can see 99.1 percentage. So it's quite perfect. Uh, you couldn't uh, make it better. Uh, the stance phase it's near 60 percentage. The swing phase is 40 percentage, as considered as normal. So uh, big improvement, and also an improvement we see on the table below. The cadence has improved up to 100, and the speed meters per seconds has also improved. 
to 1 and 11. Uh, we can see uh, comparison, the cadence is now 100, before it was 87. Okay, so, and now we have a comparison um, of the videos. Yeah? Um, often I have to look the videos over and over and over, and um, I have difficulties to um, have uh, my interpretation, but uh, with the G-Walk it's, uh, it's clear. So now let's have a look again without Bionis, especially on the speed. Yeah, so, and with the Bioness functional electric stimulation, also we see more balancing in, uh, between the left and right step. So the stance phase on the left st uh, step on the left side has increased and the swing phase of the left step has decreased to normal. So, uh, my interpretation would be that she's uh, more able to have an, um, a better intercoordination, uh, intermuscular coordination uh, between the plantar flexors and the dorsal extensors on the left, um, on the right lower limb. So, um, the second clinical case. We have an eight-year-old girl. She has a hemiparesis on the left side, leg and the arm because of a birth complication. So let's have a look on her gait. And also have a look on her rolling rolling off phases on the left side. We have um, to have a close look, um, but the ability of uh, the dorsal flexor and the um, plantar flexor on the left side is decreased. And so we have the clinical report. Now we see it here clearly. Uh, the symmetry index, okay, it's colored in orange, 85% um, and the propulsion index, it's covered in green. She walks very fast, we see it on the table below. The speed meters per second are 1.77, yeah, uh, 1.33 is considered as the normal value. So, um, she walks very fast and the propulsion um, it's quite good, it's, uh, but um, the deficit we see here is the big difference yeah, between left and right. So uh, we see the propulsion of the left leg is decreased. So, um, and the difference between left and right, yeah, you could see it's 4.2, it's over three, so um, the difference is considered as um, impaired and uh, not healthy. Uh, when we have a look on the quality index, the left step, we see a quite longer stance phase, near to 70 percentage, and a shortened swing phase, um, about 30 percentage. So, and uh, when we have a look, on the clinical report post therapy, we see that much difference. And uh, to mention, the therapy was 20 minutes. Uh, we have that much improvement in the symmetry index. We see here a value of 90 percentage, all colored in green. And uh, so that would be considered as normal. The propulsion index is more balanced between left and right. 
um, the propulsion index right decreases, the propulsion index left increases, so we have more balancing uh, between the propulsion left and right. So uh, whatever we have done in the therapy and specific exercises, her body and the body's compensation automatically um, has the result in balancing the propulsion index left and right. So also the left step quality index, we have a look, uh, big improvement, 94.9%. Uh, so the stance phase decreases more to normal, the swing phases increases also more to normal. Yeah. So that we see here. And to mention what exercise we did, we did uh, the treadmill for 12 minutes with um, speed of 4.5 kilometers per hour and uh, decrease um, 4.5. Yeah. And so it's a kind of strengthening training, especially the calves, the gastrocnemius and the soleus. And yeah, she did automatically a very good compensation, obviously, on the objective data of the chi work, we can see it. Also, we did the uh, um, exercises, side steps on sliding pads, yeah, side steps, side steps, side steps, um, uh, kind of jumping exercises focused on the left leg in 20 minutes. We have this result, and um, that's great, yeah, to um, have this fact on this objective data for me and also the patient. So the third and last clinical case is uh, also a female patient. Uh, she has multiple sclerosis, 33 years old, an impairment of the gait. You will see it. So what you can see. Yeah. The common goal uh, from the patient and me was to get more stability in the core, walk more symmetrically, because uh, the, uh, she has a big shift with, say hello, <laughs> um, to the left side. So the hip abductors obviously um, are impaired more on the left side. So. Um, let's have a look on the clinical report. Mm, we see here the symmetry index, um, <clears throat> colored in orange, propulsion index, colored in orange, and uh, the value of 83.2 percentage. Uh, very nice balance propulsion in index between left and the right leg. Um, but we uh, try to more strengthening the propulsion, the ability to um, accelerate the body forward. Yeah, especially the left and the right leg. So, and uh, when we have a deeper look to the quality index, we see um, it's quite in the range, um, but we see a big change in the clinical report after the therapy. I have to mention the therapy here, in this case, was 50 minutes. And uh, let's have a look on the cadence on the table below and the speed. Yeah. So, and most important in this therapy was uh, showing the chi walk. We see the stride length in meters and highlighted in red the right value of 1.15. Yeah, so we see um, the step length of the right leg is shortened. So we come back later. That's the exercises we did. So we did core stability. She has to pick up a ball and throw it back in my direction. Um, to mention, before half a year, she wasn't able to pick something up from, from the ground. So and now she's able to have the core stability to pick up the ball and throw it back in my direction. 
Uh, the second exercise, we did uh, some activation for the one leg stance. She has to tip with her toes on the ball, left and right. So we have uh, the exercise um, with the side steps. Yeah, she has uh, the support of the arms, they are free. And <clears throat> we have uh, a little competition and um, it was more difficult for her to keep the tablet, the body, the core are blocked. And my thinking was that she has to work more with her hip abductors uh, musculature. And uh, the last exercise we see it here, we did uh, deep squats on the climbing wall. Also focused on propulsion. Yeah, acceleration. Okay, so, and what shows the clinical report? Let's see here, <clears throat> that's the gate after the therapy. So, what do you see? Yeah, the uh, goal was that she um, goes during the gate more symmetrically. Less movement, shift on the left side of the pelvis. Yeah, and I think we see the difference. Okay, so the interesting thing, uh, now we have a look on the clinical report after the therapy. And now, that could also be um, an interpretation of the clinical report. We have a uh, massive decrease in symmetry index, it's colored in red. Uh, before it was approximately a value of 80. So, um, yeah, also the propulsion index, it's not that balanced. Yeah, we have an improvement on the left propulsion, but not on the right uh, propulsion. Uh, on the right side, we have a decrease. So, and also uh, more unbalancing. So, but what is quite good, uh, the quality index, it's uh, that much better because uh, we have a value of 98.1 on the right leg. And if we see here on the table below, the stride length in meters on the right value, we have now a um, value of 1.27 instead of 1.15. So, um, and my thinking was to um, maintain the quality steps during the therapy, which we have shown in the tree walk, and fundamental on this, we uh, try to maintain the symmetry or improve the symmetry and the proportion, maintaining the quality index, the quality of the steps in relation stance phase and swing phase, left and right leg. And uh, we did it yesterday and it works very well because uh, it was the first time she did uh, before the therapy uh, quality index over 90 left and right leg and also the symmetry index has improved not decreased so and uh, yeah that was uh, my goal um, with the help of the objective data the chi walk to um, maintain the quality steps by or during um, increasing the symmetry and propulsion index so um, yeah, here at last we see the videos uh, before and after. So we have a look on the pelvis and also the right step is that much longer. But also we see um, she has sometimes some difficulties after the therapy uh, during the gate. Um, because she's not used to it, no? but uh, it's all a compensation. So say hello or ciao, and yeah, that was that was it. You have listened to me thirty-five minutes. I want to thank you for that. Yeah. Um, Christian, I would like really to thank you for your time.
Um, it was uh, very, very interesting, and I hope we can uh, eventually in the future uh, repeat uh, this opportunity, um, eventually speaking about other uh, arguments. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you for listening. Bye. Bye-bye.